Hey, it's Norm from Tested, and I'm here with Wes Fenlon. Hey. We are back in my garage after a long delay. Also my garage. Also your garage. Our garage. It, after a long delay. We Norm, are, Norm, we have an arcade cabinet. We have an arcade cabinet. Here's an update, finally. It works. I, it works. Gotta apologize. It's been a while, so we've given an update. We're trying to run through a bunch of technical problems. Time just went by, but we got some progress. So, want to check in. So last time we did a video, we had been, we basically finished the basic wiring. We'd finished yep. wiring up all the controls, except for I think one. We had all the joysticks and buttons hooked up for their button maps going to the control board, but we didn't have the ground wire hooked That's up. That's right. And we had to get more wire to be able to daisy chain our ground from basically one end all the way to the other end, hook everything up. We got some more wire. That's right. We had a wire stripping That's right, party. so yeah. it's four sets of controls with joysticks and buttons, different types of joysticks, if you recall, different types of actual buttons. They're all connected to something called an IPAC, uh, which is a control board. That From Ultimark, who Ultimark. also made our spinner and our trackball. That's right, yeah. And that connects to a PC over USB, and it just basically interprets these buttons and joystick directions as keyboard commands. Right, so um, when you look at the control mapping software, which we use a little bit, you just see, you know, you'd hit up on a joystick and that would be like the V key. Yeah. And that just tells MAME V is up and you have your controls. So since you saw us last, we wired the ground wire and that one we daisy chained. It was like 40 individual pieces, chaining them, connecting them then also to the iPack and then did a test, finished building the PC yep. and installed Windows and the controls for the most part worked. Yeah, There's a little bit everything. of troubleshooting. We're still, we still have one joystick that isn't quite responding, and we don't think it's our wiring. We think it's something wrong with the stick, yeah. but everything else is good. All signs point to good, so that was a big component. The other big component, of course, that we haven't really talked about is the monitor. The monitor, or the monitors. We technically have two. We have two monitors. What we're going to be using for the arcade cabinet is a CRT. It was provided. We bought it from our friend Steve Lynn. He's an arcade enthusiast. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Steve. And what it is, it's a Cortec. Uh, Cortic monitor, 19 inch from Betson Imperial. So this is an older monitor, but is basically brand new, hasn't been used. Right. It still has the plastic on it. We haven't taken that off yet. That'll probably be the last thing we do before we fully seal this thing up. And unlike a CRT that you would buy for your computer or something like a CRT TV for your living room, this is a CRT that was built for arcade, for you know slot machine or uh, for you know video poker machines, for example. Um, but the way it connects to a PC was something that you can't just plug it into. I mean, you can, but it's not recommended that you plug into a normal video card. Right, and most most video cards now, and probably even five, ten years ago, were not built to output at the resolution that this thing expects, and also like the voltage is just, it doesn't work, right. which is why we got the arcade VGA, also from Ultimark, that is really just built to be able to handle something like a DVI signal going to an LCD, mm -hmm. but it's primarily designed with some custom driver software to handle an old 15 kilohertz CRT like this. 15 hertz. 15 kilohertz. 15 kilohertz yeah. CRT, and what, what is this a CGA monitor? Yes, so there are some, when we were first researching these, I was interested in some of the other types of monitors, like there's the TriSync monitor, where you can switch between CGA and VGA and EGA, which is mm -hmm. in the middle, and get different resolutions in there. There aren't many games that run at those ultra like, low old format resolutions. Well, so this is, this is kind of the oldest, right? This yeah. is the equivalent of, you know, close to 240p, like NES games, SNES games. It's a little different because it's on the arcade, but this is the oldest format for arcade stuff, and it's what the vast majority of games run on up through like mid-90s. Right. And then you have some newer stuff that would be able to run at a higher resolution, but you can still just run it on this anyway. It's going to be okay. You can run it interlaced, whatever. You're fine. So there wasn't much need to try to get one of those TriSync monitors and they're really hard to find and they're really expensive and most of them are designed for bigger like 27 inch stand up cabinets. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this was by far the simplest way to go and was something we could actually obtain. And then plugging this into the VGA card isn't 
just like your normal HD TV or computer monitor because it's not like there's a VGA port on that either. Right, so we had to get from Ultimark, we got a special cable mm -hmm. uh, and, and VGA, like a booster, signal booster. Which we didn't actually have to use. So some of the CRT monitors, if you're gonna build an arcade cabinet, do first of all, do the research. There yeah. are so many of these old monitors, none of which are still manufactured. And so some require actually an amplification. And there's not just like one connector that everything uses yeah. or one, you know, there are very different requirements for different monitors. Uh, if you can get a Wells Gardner that's kind of like the most standard and mm -hmm. you're gonna be able to, you know, no problem hook it up to like the arcade VGA. But yeah, it, it can get a little tricky. And you, can, you may have to splice your own cable, for example. And with VGA, it's fairly simple. You, you know, to, if you can buy a cable that has the endpoints and leads, you can actually wire them RGB and all those other signals. Fortunately for us, we didn't have to do that. We didn't have to do that. The cable that we got that came with the video card plugged right in. There's power that goes into the monitor, plugging that in, and then plugging into the PC. It didn't work the very first time either. So we had a lot of driver issues. We're using Windows 8, uh, which is a little trickier. Like if you had XP, that's kind of, a, a lot of this arcade stuff was, people were figuring out MAME and really making it work around Windows 2000, Windows XP. And you could run MAME on like a Pentium 4 at the time and it, most games would play just fine. So that's kind of what everything's based around. And now they have drivers that'll work for Windows 7 and Windows 8, but it's like they're hard to find. It was kind of had to go through some weird steps in the setup process where it was telling me the drivers were installing, but then it just wasn't mm -hmm. installing anything. Finally, it got the drivers to install to the point where it would recognize the proper resolutions and then this thing just came to life. That's right, so it actually works as the Windows desktop. Ultra low resolution, what is it? We can run it at like 640 by 288? Yeah, so we can do 640 by 480, but it doesn't run as well for the desktop. You get a little flicker, mm -hmm. uh, but you can run it at 640 by 288, which is non-interlaced, and then it looks, it looks great. It looks great, and the flicker that you do see on the screen right now, that's just because I'm recording this video at a different frame rate and right. a different frequency. But to us, it's almost flicker free. Um, it's still not feature complete yet. Yeah, so we still, we barely have MAME installed. Yeah. We have MAME installed and we have a front end installed called Mala that is designed to do a bunch of different things. You can use multiple emulators with it if you want. It's a front end, you can skin it so you could swap between, you know, Super Nintendo games and, right. and NES games and arcade games. The main advantage of Mala for us is a few tricks it can do with, uh, for example, when it's set up right, you can touch a joystick and it will orient your game browser and your game to the direction that you're facing, right? Which is useful for us because we have different orientations, three different orientations for yeah. where the controls are coming from. Now we're gonna run the software in the next episode. The final episode is gonna be all complete and finished. We don't wanna talk about the, the monitor today. Most people building arcade cabinets will not be using a CRT, they'll be using an LCD like the one we have there. Yeah. We picked a Dell 2412M, kind of middle of the road, $200 LCD. It's one of their ultra sharps, but it's not like their super high end ultra sharps. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, they broaden the line a little bit, but it's still a really good monitor. And when shopping for an LCD for an arcade cabinet, you want to consider two things. You want to consider the color gamut, the range of colors, so we chose an IPS monitor. It's got some power fluctuations yeah, we going on We do have some here. power, all cables and everything. And then the other thing we want to, uh, you want to consider when buying an LCD is the input lag. Yeah, so when I first started researching the, the LCDs, I, we didn't know yet which we were gonna use, right? We weren't sure if we'd be able to get our CRT. And knowing that we were gonna build a cocktail cabinet, the thing I kept coming back to was I wanted the viewing angle to be as good as it possibly could That's be. Because right. the people, when, you know, when you're sitting here, you're gonna be looking at it kind of from a really low angle, and same for this side, plus you're gonna be looking at it from the side. Yeah. And if you have a crappy TN panel, even if the input lag on that panel is lower than it is on IPS, mm -hmm. which is the case normally, it's not gonna look very good from the side right. Right. or from the bottom, it's gonna be washed out. So the color quality of the IPS and the viewing angles were worth it despite 
the the extra input lag that yeah. it would add. And the arcade enthusiasts, people, especially the fighting game enthusiasts, they've tested a lot of the LCDs. Uh, you, we'll have a link below. You can actually check out their recommendations. This panel is rated about nine to ten milliseconds of input lag, which is still actually really good. It's it's good, I, absolutely. You know, a lot of times you'll look on like a monitor's page on Amazon mm -hmm. or something, and it'll say like three millisecond refresh yeah. or something like that. That's inaccurate. Right. That's not the actual input lag of using that panel. That's just like the gray to gray response time for the pixel. Not the same thing. So it, that can be kind of misleading. Uh, so the fact that the entire signal processing pipeline for this monitor is under 10 milliseconds, that's less than a frame if you're at 60 FPS. Right. So that's pretty damn good for an LCD. Absolutely. And we that one's even 1610. Mm -hmm. So it would give you a little bit more you know, vertical space. Yeah. So if we had built it into this, we'd actually have a larger overall real estate in mm -hmm. here. So have decent viewing angles, but it wouldn't be as good as classic Absolutely. CRT. So that's where the arcade cabinet project is right now. Thanks for being patient. I apologize again. And we'll be back in a little bit. I'm not going to promise when, but everything's going to be done. We're going to run through the software and actually play some games. Yes. Yes. Arcade games. Arcade games. We'll see you guys next time.